I had an incredible encounter with the Lord on the 22nd of this month. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it, and then we're going to pray. Um, I want to give you a little background of who Cheryl and I are, uh, for those of you that may not know. We've been very involved in government um, ever since 2003. And uh, involved in the point, point where we're involved in government, but we're not involved in politics. Uh, and there's a huge difference. Uh, we don't get caught up in the political jargon, but we hear the word of the Lord and, and begin following and doing that. And we, we never did that up until 2003. And it was when she had a dream in 2003, we were actually beginning the second leg of the US-1 Liberty Prayer Tour. The second leg was going to start actually here in Melbourne at the church on the corner that has the bell out front. I don't remember the name of it. <clears throat> and it went from, actually it went from Key West all the way up to uh, the Georgia line on US-1. And that used to be known as the Freedom Highway many years ago. It was called the King's Highway. But it's another story for another time. But that morning, we get, we're getting ready to do this tour and leave our house. And Cheryl says, I need to tell you a, a dream that I had. And we're getting ready. And, and this is the first time that in, I forget how many years it was then that we've been married. We'll be married 47 years, September 6th. And, um, but we'd been married some time. And I had never heard her say, I need to, tell, I need to tell you this dream. She said, in this dream, you and I were spending the night in the White House. And you wake up early in the morning, which is a habit that I have. I'm an early riser, always have been. Even when I was a teenager, I woke up before the sun came out and still do. And <clears throat> she said, you got up and you were walking through the White House. And as you went through the White House, uh, you were looking at the pictures on the wall and the different statues. And then Bush came out, President Bush, uh, the one who was president back in that time, 2003. Well, George H.W. Bush, I think. George W. Bush, okay. And he comes out and he walks up to you and he says, Ken, he said, I heard that you were here. I've always wanted to meet you. So we greeted each other and hugged necks and he began taking me on a tour of the White House. And on this tour, he would take me in different rooms and show me different pictures. And he would tell me the history behind this picture or the history behind this statue or the history behind this room. And then he took me into what was a trophy room. And, the, and we didn't even know, she didn't even know that the White House actually has a trophy room. It used to have the heads of animals on there. They don't any longer but it's still called the trophy room. And he showed me the trophies of past presidents, and he showed me his trophies. Then we went through a door and went down into a tunnel and came up inside the city. And he and I were walking around and talking to people, and he and I were hitting it off. We were talking about hunting and fishing. He's a country boy. I'm a country boy. And so we were just getting along well, and all of a sudden the Secret Service calls and says, where are you? We don't know where you are. He said, I'm okay. I'm with Ken. As if though I can protect him. And then we go into another tunnel and come up on the Supreme Court inside, up on the bench. And we're standing there on the bench and he looks at me and he says, in order for me to do what God has called me to do, I need some of these people removed from the bench. Can you help me? And I said, yes, I can in her dream. Through prayer and fasting, we will get the, this done. And I have a friend named Dutch Sheets. I will call him and he will help us. But well, Dutch had already been going into the court. And in the dream, I take out my old razor phone. You remember the razor phones? I mean, that was top of the line in that day, you know. Took out my razor phone and I called him and bam, he appears in the dream. <clears throat> and so that began our journey. And I've got many, many stories of how God has given us victories in the government. 
And that began our journey into bringing God and His will into the government of our land. I was sharing with someone yesterday because they were saying, I'm so tired of this political jargon that's going on. I'd be glad when this election is over because hopefully it'll quit by then. I said, it's not going to quit then. I said, but we have to learn how to navigate through that climate and be governmental but not political. And that's important. And so after that took place, Cheryl and I, along with Dutch, we have been several times in the Supreme Court and actually up on the bench several times, which the public is not allowed to go up there, but we had an inside straight to get in there after hours. And it's, the whole place is interesting. I have been on elaborate tours of this place. You may not know that in the Supreme Court, above the courtroom itself is a full-size basketball court. There's a court in the heavens and a court on the earth. And there's a deep basement. I'll, I'll share some things with you as we get into this. And so we started praying in the courts back in 2004 prior to Sandra Day O'Connor resigning and William Rehnquist passing away. God knew that he, somebody was, people were going to be leaving, but he needed help in getting them removed so that he could also put on the bench who he wanted on there. Let me share this with you. God is very governmental. More than you are. The Bible says in Isaiah 33, 22, you want, might want to mark this down or look it up. It says that God is our judge, He is our lawgiver, and He is our king. And this is where we get our three branches of government from. God is our judge, He's our lawgiver, and He is our king. And that's Isaiah 33, 22. And so we saw these people come off the bench, but then we also saw two people put on the bench. It was an amazing display of what God was doing as he began to almost like a chess game, begin putting in there who he wants in there. We have prayed over the years since then, have been up there, and Hal was with me when uh, Kavanaugh hearings we're going on, and the I've never seen a climate as hostile as that was. And he and I and some others, we walked through the halls of the Senate praying that year for the God's kingdom to come and His will to be done. Go ahead and put that first slide up, Daniel. I could go in and tell you stories that I've, of governors that the Lord has used us with, senators and representatives but on the 22nd and if you're on facebook and we're friends you may have seen this on the 22nd of this month i was awakened go ahead to the next slide i was awakened around 3 a.m to the sound of a thunderstorm just off in the atlantic ocean and i had just had a dream this was an incredible dream that you, that I was right there, you know, as, as this was going down, I was seeing this. And in the dream, Tangi Combs, who is a part of Kingdom Gate, she's part of our staff here. Uh, she's under the weather tonight, pray for her. But in the dream, she is working in the cafeteria of the Supreme Court. Now, I've been in that cafeteria many, many times. I, when I go to D.C., I stay close to the Supreme Court, and I always eat breakfast in the cafeteria they open at 7 30 and they have country breakfast and I like country breakfast so I know that what the cafeteria looks like I know where it is but Tangi was in there working and what many of you may not know is that the justices go in there many times and talk to the people in the cafeteria as a matter of fact the junior justice which now is Brett Kavanaugh each week they have to go in there and greet the people that are in there whether there's staff or whether they're people out of the public. They go in there, the junior associate goes in there and greets them. 
He also is responsible for getting all the coffee for the other justices. He's a low man on the totem pole. Now, whether he does it or whether some of his staff does it doesn't matter, but he's responsible for all of that. And in this dream, Chief Justice Roberts comes to her and says, Tell Ken Malone, our positions are being overrun. I need his help. Tanji then comes and relays his word to me. And I said to Tanji, Damn the torpedoes. Tell him we're coming. End of dream, and then the sound of thunder. It's an amazing, amazing dream. I woke up after that dream around 3 a.m., and I sat in my living room for another two to three hours processing this and praying. God, show us what you want to do in the courts. And I've been, been in conversation with Dutch Sheets and Tim Sheets over the last two days talking about what God is now prepared to do or wanting to do in the Supreme Court. And what we need to understand about the Supreme Court is that our Supreme Court in America is responsible for taking prayer out of the schools. So you see the kind of condition our nation is in right now. They didn't just take prayer out, but they took God out. Our Supreme Court is also responsible in 1973, in January of that year, of allowing Roe v. Wade to become law, where now over 61 million babies have been aborted in the furnaces of the Supreme Court because of the decisions that they have made. I'm saying this to tell you that if we're going to see a nation that shifts into the purposes of God, We've got to have the Supreme Court. You can get the White House many, many times. But if you don't get that Supreme Court, you don't get decisions on down the years. Because the Supreme Court that is there now will make decisions that will affect us for 100 years in the future. So it's very, very important that we tap in. Go back to that picture, Daniel, at the beginning. The term that John Roberts used in her dream that said our positions are being overrun, that's not a term that I ever use. And then the term, damn the torpedoes, is not a term that I use. I've heard it before. But it was a term used by a man by the name of David Farragut. And David Farragut, the history records him using the phrase, damn the torpedoes. Go to that history page there, Daniel. It was used by him when he was a rear admiral aboard a Union ship during the Battle of Mobile Bay on August the 5th, 1864 in the Civil War. Actually, what happened was one of the ships that was ahead of him, I think it was the Tecumseh, hit a landmine. What they called in that day, it wasn't a landmine, it was a sea mine. And it was called in that day a torpedo. And they were just under the water. And it sunk the Tecumseh, killed about 90 men that was aboard that ship. And... All of a sudden, the ship started backing up, and David Farragut climbed up on a mast, and he said, damn the torpedoes. Four bells, Captain Drayton. Go ahead, Jew it, full speed. The term came to be known later on as damn the torpedoes, full speed. This Union victory together with the capture of Atlanta later on was extensively covered by the Union newspapers and was a significant boost for Abraham Lincoln's bid for re-election three months after the battle. I'm not sure what the Lord is doing, but I am sure of this, that there's something that God wants to happen that's going to help win the election this fall. For conservative ideology. 
So tonight we're going to spend some time praying over the Supreme Court. And for some of you, this may be new to you. For some of you, you get to cut your teeth on praying for the court. Go to that next slide, Daniel. <clears throat> Our mission, should you choose to accept, we disavow any knowledge of your actions. We're going to fortify the positions in this Kingdom Gate Worship Center, the state of Florida, is now going to become responsible for fortifying the positions on the Supreme Court. I'm preparing to write now a, a, a prayer strategy that we're going to launch on from the 5th of August all the way through August 23rd. August 23rd was when they took Fort Morgan in Alabama. There was a Fort Gaines and over on one side and Fort Morgan on the other side. And it took them from August the 5th to August 23rd to win Fort Morgan. But the thing was, they took Mobile Bay on the 5th. We're going to take the Supreme Court, and we're going to take the White House, and we're going to take the, the Congress between August 5th and August 23rd. We're going to pray for each justice. We're going to pray for their salvation and for a Holy Spirit encounter. We're going to pray that each judge would judge conservatively in an alignment with the Constitution of the United States of America. One of the things that I am, you need to understand the way that I think, I believe that God started this nation. I believe this nation belongs to Him. And I don't believe He wants it to go to hell in a handbasket. I heard Bishop Bill Hammond say this last night as I was listening to him. He said this, he said, this is not the time the rapture is going to happen. This is the time of a worldwide revival. And that's the time that we're in. You and I need to quit listening to the newspaper prophets. Prophets who read the newspaper and then prophesy will not prophesy in my ears. Unless I know that they're reading the Bible. We're going to decree a shift in the court from a liberal false ideology to a conservative biblical based ideology. We're going to decree that Chief Justice John Roberts returns to his conservative roots. We're going to ask forgiveness for the 61 million, uh, I forgot to add a zero, 61 million aborted children that has taken place in America since 1973. Now you want to talk about an injustice. People are fighting for justice in America right now. But you want to talk about injustice, here it is right here. Over 61 million babies aborted in the furnaces of the Supreme Court. We're going to decree a removal of those who will not change and uphold the rights of the unborn. Some that are there need to go, and the Lord knows who they are. We're not going to name them here tonight. I have some idea. But because we're live and I don't want it to be used against me, we're not going to mention names. We're just going to pray for all of them. Back in 2004 or 5, before Justice Roberts and Justice Alito were placed upon the bench, we would go and we would walk down that bench praying for each justice. And we did not know who God wanted to remove. We just knew he wanted to remove some. They told us, they said, there's cameras, the person who got us in there. Said, there's cameras watching you, and you can't touch anything. But my arm accidentally bumped up against each chair. You'll see the chairs in a moment. As I walked by, because I didn't know who the Lord was wanting to take out. Now, I've got people I want him to take out. But I don't know who he wants to take out. So we would just walk by those chairs and lay elbows on all nine chairs and decree 
that who the Lord wanted gone would be gone. In Jesus' name. We're also going to pray that each seat is reserved for a conservative, constitutionalist believer. And many times we don't know how to pray. Romans 8th chapter talks about this. We don't know how to pray as we should, but the Holy Ghost prays for us with intercessions and groanings that cannot be uttered. Next slide. See the picture of the United States Supreme Court there. And you'll see, the, see part of the gates on each side and the fences and that sort of thing. Right there in the middle are brass doors. I've actually prayed at those doors and me and a friend of mine, Jay Comiskey, who works for CBN, took communion at those doors. And this was back when it was hostile to pray with your eyes closed. And when I teach people, when I take them up there, I say, pray with your eyes open. And when I see them doing like this, I will nudge them. Open your eyes. Because you're there covertly. Back in this day in 2004, if they, you took the Bible in there, you would either be arrested or sent outside. So we didn't know how to get the scriptures in there because so, we wanted to, to decree the word. So we'd write them in the palm of our hand. Or I remember being in a hotel on New Jersey Avenue just down from the Capitol one year. And I took a Gideon Bible and just ripped the page out of it and folded it up to the scripture I wanted and took it with me into the court and just held it right there and read the scripture. Now, some people have a hard time with that, but the Gideons love when I tell that story. They literally do. Cheryl's brother was, is a Gideon, and when I told him the story, he said, man, I need you to tell that testimony in front of all the Gideons. It's just the religious people that have a hard time with that. Jay Comiskey and I did, and he works for CBN. We did communion in front of those brass doors on a Saturday morning about 7.30 a.m. And I knew what he wanted to do that we could be arrested for. And so we go in front of those brass doors, and he and I are standing there, and we're taking communion, and I'm looking around, got my eyes going back and forth. I don't want to be arrested. And we take communion, then he says, I'm going to serve the court communion. And I said, what? He said, I'm going to serve communion to the court. So he knelt down, and he took a wafer, and he placed it on the ground. And started rubbing it in a little crack there in front of that door. And then he took some grape juice and poured it on the ground. And I'm standing up. He's kneeling down. He says, come on, Ken, come. Bend down here. you got to get down here. we got to humble ourselves before God. I'm thinking, oh, my Lord, I know I'm going to be arrested at any moment. I mean, they walk, the police walk around like crazy there. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm praying. I'm saying, God, I've got to go home today. I, I was leaving at 1030 on a flight coming back home. I said, Lord, I've got to go to home today. Please don't let me get arrested. I had been there three days. I'm ready to go home. Finally, we're done serving the court communion. We both stand back up, and a, a uh, Capitol Police, Supreme Court policeman, walks right in front of us and steps in the juice. No lie. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord. He didn't, I don't know, he didn't see us or something. Next slide. This is inside the Supreme Court. It's a very interesting place. Each chair is handcrafted for the justice that sits in it. It's not just a chair that's bought. Each one is custom made. They actually also have, and it's not in the picture here, but they have their own dining room. And there are times that they have brought Celine Dion there. And would all the justices and their family come, and they eat dinner together while Celine Dion is singing a song to them. Each chair is custom made. The chair in the center is where the chief justice sits. The chair to, which would be to your right, is where... Ruth Bader Ginsburg sits. The senior justices 
sit on either side of him. And, and it goes on down to the junior justices on the end. Next slide. You'll see the justices here from left to right is a, at, on the front row is a Associate Justice Stephen G. Breyer, Associate Justice Clarence Thomas, Chief Justice John G. Roberts, Jr., Associate Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Associate Justice Samuel Alito. On the back row is Justice Neil Gorsuch, Justice Sonia Sotomayor, Justice Elena Kagan, and Associate Justice Brett Kavanaugh. These are the people in the seats that we're going to be praying for in the month of August and even starting tonight. We're going to begin praying for them. Belita, I want to get you back up here on the keyboard. Because God wants this court. He wants this court. It belongs to Him. It doesn't belong to the devil. America doesn't belong to the enemy. America belongs to God. Say it with me. America belongs to God. And you and I need to begin making a shift in who we are. To where our focus is not on a local focus or our focus is not on us and our needs. God has a need in this nation. And right now he needs his intercessors. To begin standing in the gap and making up the hedge for this land. You and I are the ones that are called to do it. I think it was Smith Wigglesworth who said that God can do nothing in the earth unless he does it through a man. It's the way he set it up. The Bible says that he's given the earth to the children of men. You and I are responsible. We're held in responsibility to what takes place within this nation. So I want you to stand to your feet with me because we're going to move into a prayer meeting here. Turn on that mic one of the microphones, Kendall. You come on up. I may have some of you come up and pray this never come up and prayed before. And when you do come up to pray, you're not to talk to anyone. You're not to talk to people out there. You're not to prophesy. You're just going to pray. If you have a prophetic word, it has to be about the court. And if you have that word, then you pray that word. You can't say, the Lord showed me last week. We're going to enter into a prayer meeting going into the throne room of God. I will bring some of you up. If I don't bring you up, just stay where you are and pray right where you are. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just bless you. Let's just pray in the Spirit for a little bit. We bless you and give you praise and give you honor and give you glory for what you're doing. Lord, I just want you to know that we're coming. We decree right now, damn the torpedoes, damn the COVID, damn the way that we feel, whatever we've been going through, we're coming. We're coming. Doesn't matter about the mines in the water. Doesn't matter about the things that we've been going through. It doesn't matter about the... Uh, uh, the, the, the um, things that have been in the news we're coming and we're coming as an ecclesia we're coming to release your jurisdiction in the earth we're coming to bring your kingdom into this earth lord come on just start praying in the holy ghost if you want to walk around you can we're coming to bring your kingdom into this earth we're coming to shift the united states supreme court Lord, we're coming as a group, Father, tonight to stand in the gap and to make up the hedge. Lord, you and I both know that there's more prayer going on in this nation right now than ever in its history. And God, I just say tonight, God, we're going to add to the bows of heaven for the Supreme Court of the United States. We believe, Father, in Jesus' name that laws will be changed. Laws that have caused the abortions of over 61 million babies. Laws of slavery, Lord, in the womb of a mother that allows abortion. 
will be overturned. We decree that there will be a day that these will be overturned in Jesus' name. Father, I decree laws that will bring prayer in the name of Jesus back into the school system. The children and teachers will begin to cry out to God regardless of what is said in the law that they will begin crying out to God and saying, Lord Jesus, come into our schools. I can see teachers rising up and calling on the name of the Lord in the schools in class on a, on, on a Monday morning. Come on, press in. Lord, we just sure up tonight, God, each one of these seats, Father, in Jesus' name. And we decree, God, that your kingdom has come and your will is being done, Father, in the name of Yeshua. There's each of their names. Go ahead and start praying. Father, we just speak to that spirit of Baal that's over our Supreme Court right now. And we just decree that you are loosed off that court right now in Come Jesus' on. precious name. Come on. And we bind the heart of the Father to that court right now. Yeah. Father, yeah. hear the cries of the ones that you love, Lord. Stop abortion in our nation. Lord, we just decree that Roe versus Wade is going to be overturned. That Planned Parenthood is going to be defunded. And that money is going to go to the adoption of those children. Yeah. Father, yeah. we just decree over our Supreme Court that they are going to turn, return to their ancient markers. That's right. Lord, where they will stop making laws and yeah. start interpreting laws like they were designed from the beginning. And we say that you are our judge, Lord. And Lord, it says in your word that when righteous judges are appointed, there is peace in the land. So Lord, we just declare a righteous judges to that court. Lord, we pray for Justice Breyer, for Justice Thomas. Lord, we pray for John Roberts right now, that he'll return back to his conservative ways, Lord. We just ask you to give him a supernatural revelation of your love. Father, we just pray for him right now. Lord, we just say that head injury is no longer going to affect him. Father, we pray for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Lord. We just say, Lord, save her. Send your Holy Spirit to draw her heart unto you, Lord. And if not, Lord, we just say vacate. We just say over Justice Alito, a supernatural revelation of the righteousness of God. And we declare over our Supreme Court right now, we just declare over them that they will return a plumb line of righteousness will drop down into that court and they will once again rise up and be conservative in their nature, and they will be led by the God of heaven. So we just care over them right now. The kingdom of God has come to our Supreme Court, that the will of God will be done in our Supreme Court. And we give you all praise, honor, and glory, for only you are worthy, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Yes, Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that when this nation was established, you breathe into the leaders of the nation yeah, I will. the foundation of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. So we thank you, Lord, for the foundation that you gave, that you breathed. And we thank you, Heavenly Father. We know that there are those on the Supreme Court that adhere to that original intent. What you breathe, what you intended. 
what you gave as the foundation of our nation. So we call forth that original intent that was breathed by you. Lord, we pray that you contend with the spirit of Leviathan and deception that has been attempting to distort the laws of our land. And we say to you, Spirit, the Lord rebuke you. And we call forth the truth of that original intent that you breathe, Lord God, to prevail and to overcome and to move in our land. That our nation would return to this ancient marker, the ancient marker of the Constitution in the Bill of Rights. Thank you, Father. Father God, we just lift up Samuel Alito, and we lift up Neil Gorchus, Gorchus and Sonia Sotomayor, and Elena Kagan, and Brett Kavanaugh. Father God, we just ask you for heavenly encounters yeah. Holy Spirit encounters, Lord. Give them yeah. dreams and visions in the night season to where they are they realize that they are dealing with the living God and that this country is being turned back to its original roots, being founded on God, one nation under God. Yeah. Father, I thank you, Lord, for raising up the body of Christ to be interceding along with ourselves for the Supreme Court's justices. Father God, I thank you, thank you, thank you that they're arising, they're waking up, and this will happen. Things will turn. I sense this turn in the spirit realm. In Jesus' mighty name, Father God, yeah. thank you for strengthening your body, Lord. Thank you for just pouring liquid fire on the inside of us to where we cannot let this go, that we will see a shift, and we will give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Come on, stir it up. Y'all pray. Stir it up. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just see in the spirit each seat in that Supreme Court, and I just pray see it. each seat filled with God's choice. God's choice to fill those seats. And it's, I just declare and decree that it's going to be done soon. He's at work. This is on the Lord's heart. He's given our apostle a dream, a dream to get, to get the prayer, the intercessory prayer, the ecclesia, all of you. This is our assignment. So let's take that assignment right now. Lord, we receive your assignment. We dedicate ourselves and consecrate ourselves, Lord to seeing your will done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will done on that Supreme Court. You've called us, Lord. We receive it. And we say, thank you, Lord. All the glory goes to you. You want to work through us. You want to work through each one of us. Have your way, Father. Have your way. Father, we love you. We honor you in this place tonight. We declare that this nation is yours. Come on, come on. We declare that this nation is yours. Your church is rising up in this hour. Your church is becoming a praying church in this hour. And tonight we want to lift up Justice Breyer, Thomas, Roberts, Ginsburg, Alito, Gorsuch, Sotomayor, Kagan, and Kavanaugh. We want to ask, Father, that you would pierce their hearts tonight. Pierce their hearts with truth. Father, we pray that instead of them meditating upon lies day and night, they would meditate upon your law day and night and become like trees planted by the riverside, bearing fruit in each season. Bearing fruit in each season. Father, we just ask that they would uh, come to a place of wisdom and knowledge and understanding of you and your heart and your heart for all of the uh, 
uh, infants in this world who are not permitted the opportunity to grow up and be your revivalist in this world, who are not permitted the opportunity to grow up and be the next great forerunner for this nation. So we just speak right now wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you into the entire Supreme Court and that they will come to a place of understanding who God the Father is, who God the Son is, who the Holy Spirit is, will be pierced by the Spirit of God and will change their hearts and their views and their minds and embrace revival in this nation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this great move of your heart. Thank you for this great move of your heart throughout not just this city, not just this state, but throughout this nation, a nation we declare is yours in Jesus' name. Father, I just pray that you make a, a move in the Supreme Court, Lord, and I just pray over all of the justices that are there, and you just touch their hearts, Lord, and, and turn, turn them that are, turn uh, Justice Roberts, get him to turn back to a conservative, conservative way of thinking again. Lord, I just, I just raise up all of the, the justices in the Supreme Court, and I just pray that they all put, align their will with your will, that every decision that they make they seek counsel with you before making that. And every, everything they do is to please you, Lord. Bring this nation back, back to the way that you intended, to the, to the greatness that you intended when you birthed this nation. I just raise up all of the officials there. And Lord, I just thank you for all the work that you're doing in this nation and in our, for our governmental um, leaders and Lord I just thank you for every every person on the justice system that we Lord I just I just pray that they all seek to overturn Roe versus Wade Lord and I just repent on behalf of our nation for all the lives that have been destroyed because we turned a blind eye we will no longer turn a blind eye Lord we will repent and support overturning Roe versus Wade. And I just thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes and moving us towards you. And just continue to bring us closer to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we just pray that you will feel the Supreme Court with your justice, with the fear of you, Lord. Yeah, Father, we call down for the fear of you, Father. Father, we call down for the fear of you and you only, you only, you only. only even those people who are already yours, who are conservative, Lord, let their mouth be filled with your words. Let their heart and their spirit be filled with your courage, Lord. We speak courage 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 into those that can influence the supreme court we speak courage courage in the hearts of those critical those critical links we speak courage into their hearts so that lord your laws and your heart and your kingdom will be established on earth in america on earth as it is in heaven we thank you, Lord. Father God, we come before you with thanksgiving and praise. You are the one true God. Lord, we just ask that you bless the United States, Lord. You, we thank you for the backbone that you gave us, Lord, that we stand mighty and strong, strong enough to pull your kingdom down the earth, Lord. We mark every seat with a righteous judge, Lord, one that you called to be there, Lord. We, we say to the, to, to the United States that you are the city on the hill, that you shine bright as the United States goes, so goes the nations, Lord.
Lord, that your will will be done here, Lord. We cry out for mercy to you, Lord. Mercy, 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 Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord. Not because of, of us, not because of what we have done, Lord. We want mercy because of what you can do with us, Lord. Just change our hearts, Lord, for what you called us to do. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see and a heart mind after you and a willingness to do your will, Lord. Just help us, Lord. Guide us that only, do what only you can do, Lord. We just thank you and praise you. You are worthy of all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. An unjust scale is an abomination to the Lord. We declare and decree, we balance the scales of justice, and indeed we tip them towards the favor of the kingdom and our creator. And blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We declare the God of the United States is the, our Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus. And when these justices put on their robes, they will become robes of justice and they will feel the weight of the glory as they put their weight, their robes on in the natural Holy Spirit. Fill that chamber. Let it become a solemn assembly. Men may assemble, but not because of them. We declare and decree a solemn assembly in the Supreme Court of the United States. And as they open their mouth, Lord, open the eyes of their understanding. Let them see, let them see the great cloud of witnesses fill that chamber in the Supreme Court of the United States. Be made visible. Lord, dispatch your angels of justice and your angels of mercy. Let them be visible. We send them on assignment right now to the Supreme Court and let the holy fear of God most high fill the chambers of the Supreme Court for our God and his ways in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Righteousness rules the nation. So we thank you, Lord. Open up the heaven over the Supreme Court, Lord. I thank you that the angels are bringing into the earth realm everything we have need of, Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So any unjust justices, we unseat you right now. You're unseated. You're unseated. Anyone who rules in injustice according to God, we unseat you right now. I thank you that wisdom will be upon these justices, counsel, might, the ability to do anything, the godly justices, Lord. The fear of the Lord will be upon them, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for a visitation in the night yes, season for yes. each one of these justices, Lord. A visitation, a holy visitation in their dreams in the night season an encounter with you and we thank you lord for the godly justices that will rule in our nation dear god we just come before you right now jesus and we lift our voice in agreement with heaven right now we just say yes to what you say yes to. We say yes to the plans and the purposes of God over our nation. We thank you, God, that your plumb line and your heart over this nation, Jesus, will pull us back into the foundation of what you've called us to be, God. We thank you, God, that America was founded to be a light to the ends of the earth, to bring the gospel and to send missionaries and to fund the gospel to the ends of the earth, God. And we thank you that we are coming back into your heart, God, to the ends of the earth. We will spread the word and send the gospel, God. But first, start with the court, Jesus, Lord. We can't take the gospel to the ends of the earth, Lord, unless your righteousness and your justice rules from the Supreme Court of the United States, God. So we just ask, Lord, that, your, that heaven would invade that court, that there truly is a court above the Supreme Court, and we appeal to that court tonight, God. And we ask, Lord, that what you say and what verdict you render over our nation, Jesus, would truly manifest in the court here on earth, Jesus. We thank you that every justice is underneath your justice, God. 
we ask you and we know that their hearts are like waterways in your hands God and we ask that you would move them with the prayers of the saints God with with every voice being lifted before you God we ask that you would have mercy and that you would render justice and mercy over our nation that truly the fear of the Lord would be the foundation of that court that they would know that their yes be yes and their no be no and that they are accountable to the one true and living God, that they would feel the fear of the Lord in every verdict that they render, knowing that they will give it an account to you, that one day they will stand before you, God, and you will, will look upon them, Jesus. God, encounter them in the night season. Encounter them in the day, God, that you would wholly torment them with the utterances of heaven, God, that they would have dreams and encounters, open visions, Jesus. We just plead your blood over them where every demonic, occultic bloodshed has been uttered against the demonic thrones and demonic darkness and witchcraft. We just speak of better blood over them, God. We say that the life and the blood of Jesus cuts off every bit of demonic empowerment that empowers and fuels that court. We thank you, God, that they will see clearly and that truly they will feel the weight of heaven. Lord, we thank you for a divine turning. We thank you and we just declare that that court is yours for future generations, for our children and our children's children, God. We say have mercy. We lift up the blood of Jesus. We lift up every justice before you, God. We just say justice and mercy. The judgment and the foundation of heaven. Shake that cord in Jesus' name. We just say shake everything that can be shaken, exposed. We just say right now, expose every bit of wicked scheming, backroom dealings. God, we thank you that it will bring to the light that which is done in darkness, in the shadows. God, we thank you, Holy Spirit. In this season, you are shining your light and you putting your finger on every bit of darkness and demonic dealings done with that cord and backrooms, God. That there will be exposure in the headlines, God. That you will break in upon them, God, and your justice will spring forth like a mighty river across this nation. In Jesus' name. I come into agreement with every prayer that was prayed. But especially with what Katie just prayed. That there's a court in the heavens that is seated right now. That is ruling and reigning over the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court of America doesn't have the final say. There's a court in heaven. Lord, that's releasing a final say into the earth. Father, I thank you for moving by your spirit. And removing every dark corner every dark place of that court we say lord go in and shine the light in those dark places and father i thank you for doing that in the name of yeshua i slipped up a shout to the lord because i know the lord has given us the court come on yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Father, we thank you for that court. Thank you that it belongs to you. And you have given the outcome of it into the hands of the ecclesia of this nation. And we say, Lord, that as you said in Psalms 2, we will rule in the midst of our enemies. And Father, I thank you for doing that in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen.